Hi, my name is Darius, and welcome to my follow-along JavaScript tutorial. And JavaScript is a powerful, featureful, and very popular scripting language. Now, JavaScript is used in many contexts these days, but the focus of this video and the series that follows will be on its primary or original use case for designing more interactive websites. To start, we actually need an HTML file. In case you're new to HTML, I will go slowly at first, but since the focus is on JavaScript, we won't be using a lot of HTML. Of course, feel free to pause the video and go find yourself a quick tutorial. Now, in HTML, we're designing layouts, and so you put one thing inside of another and we do that in text by specifying an opening tag and a closing tag the opening tag is just whatever the tag is named in between angle brackets or less than and greater than signs the closing bracket sorry the closing tag looks the same except it has a forward slash uh, before the name okay html one thing inside another we'll put a body inside of this the body is where you put all of the stuff of the web page that will be shown, rendered. Of course, some things, uh, some tags might be invisible, but nevertheless, we're putting them in the body. All we're going to do here is put a script tag. This is how we embed JavaScript into an HTML document. Script is special because yes you put one thing inside another but everything inside of the script tag is no longer HTML so I can't keep going in here and putting like a paragraph tag because inside the script tag it's no longer HTML it is a script which script well you can specify which script you want it to use Ooh, okay. The most popular script is JavaScript. PHP is also common. And if you leave this out entirely, the browser will try to guess based on what you are writing inside. But you shouldn't be writing uh, regular HTML in here. So that said, we're actually ready to start diving into writing JavaScript. I am going to go ahead and flatten my HTML only so that as I'm typing the JavaScript it's going to stay all the way to the left. I wouldn't normally do this uh, in a um, an application that I'm writing, but for the purpose of this tutorial it'll just make it easier to read. Okay, so the first feature of JavaScript I want to show you is not really code at all it's a comment and you do it with two forward slashes and comments are just little notes you insert that get skipped by the compiler okay so good for um, explaining what a particular part of the code does you might put the name and date at the top of the file or the company whatever there's two ways to do a comment in JavaScript. One is with the two forward slashes. The other way is if you're writing lots, you can use a forward slash and asterisk, and then it makes a multi line comment. So everything inside this, any number of spaces down, is a comment. The other thing comments are great for is deactivating little bits of code that are giving you a hard time or just. Um, that you you don't need them anymore or you're temporarily disabling them um, to work on something else. And I'm sure you'll see me use that throughout these tutorials. So I already um, I already showed you the alert function. So let me just prove if I go in here, I'll put I'll put the alert back. And now I'm going to take my alert and comment it out. You'll hear programmers say, comment it out. 
It's gone. <laughs> okay, but I didn't delete it, so it's still there, and it's really easy to re-enable. I would say that function of commenting is more used, more useful than the actual leaving notes part. But, okay. So, I'm gonna, yeah, we're gonna put that alert back. And instead of just having a predefined something we're gonna say, I'm gonna show you in JavaScript you can create a variable name which is just a, like a placeholder, something you can store information in. And I'm gonna call the variable name. So um, this is just syntax that you're gonna wanna commit to memory. Let something equal something else. My name is Darius. So, oh, I, okay. I said that I wouldn't be using semicolons, but I am. It must be by habit. All right, so now we've defined a variable, we can use it by adding name to this, uh, to our hello message. And it'll do pretty much exactly what you'll think. It'll start with these characters inside the quotes, and then it stops, it sees a plus sign, and then name. Now, since name is not in quotes, it is referring back to the name that we defined, which then it looks inside of that variable and sees that it's equal to the text Darius. And so it'll essentially, um, it'll do that. When I say it, I mean like the JavaScript interpreter as it's executing this. And then when it, um, it does the addition operation, it'll combine the two strings, and we should see hello Darius print out on the screen. Cool. I am um, checking everything as I go along, mostly so that you can pause the video and test it on your own. That's pretty much how I learned how to program. Uh, it makes it more interactive. I think it makes it more fun. There's also another way to do this, rather than using this plus sign, which admittedly makes it less readable. This is actually a more recent language edition, but instead of using a double sign, it's not a double sign, double quote, sorry you use the, uh, I call them tick marks. There's probably a better name for them, but they're usually to the left of the number one on the keyboard. Not not on the number pad, but or above the tab maybe, or under the escape key. They're way over there on the top left. Anyway, um, you can also use strings, um, except they allow for something special and that is if you put a dollar sign in and then curly braces and the name of a variable, it'll automatically like inject it, it'll stick it in there. Okay, so these two will do the same. Well, I guess there's a comma. Sweet. The technical name for this is string interpolation. Um, and that's because it's like expanding the string and adding uh, more stuff to it, I suppose. Variables don't have to be strings. They can also be numbers. So x is, we'll say x is x. Syntax highlighting. Uh, is very helpful because it helps you to see a good syntax highlighter will help you see how 
uh, the JavaScript interpreter thinks of it. So it changed the color of this that follows the dollar sign and the curly braces because it's not interpreted as a string. It's interpreted as code. Okay. We should see x is 12. So there you have it. Variables with let. Messages printed uh, messages with alert and string interpolation with dollar sign curly braces. Now, before we go, at the end of each of my videos, I'm going to give you all a challenge, an independent challenge, so, so that you can extend your JavaScript skills. So here's the challenge. Create a program with uh, two inputs, let x and y, two numbers, and the output should alert their product uh, in the message. All right, I'll see you next time in the second JavaScript video, um, and I'll have the solution for the challenge, and we will go from there.